welcome back to Leading Women Live. This is our second show. Um, last month was really successful. We had a great following. Um, great questions coming through, and we're still answering some of those questions. So definitely tweet us or email us your questions. Um, this is a show where we bring in a panel of real business women, um, experts in the industry, and we try and answer the questions that you have that will help you grow yourself personally or your business. Um, and if we haven't got the answers, then we certainly will know someone who can help you. Um, I'll start off by um, in, uh, introducing the, the panel we have today. Um, let's start with you, Anna, shall we? My name is Anna Penrose, and I'm the Business Workshop Manager at Onlooking Potential. I'm Lucy Morgan. I'm an Associate Partner at Follett Stock Solicitors, and I help with their business development, and I'm also an expert in media and intellectual property law. Hi, I'm Cassie. I work leading women as marketing manager. Also run my own business, Cake Top Characters, making caricature wedding cake toppers. And also run my blog, Catching Bouquets. Hi, I'm Heather Tab, and I work for Cornwall College. I'm based at St Austell, one of the seven sites that we have. Claire Harris from Cornwall Development Company, um, specialising in business skills development. And I'm Rachel James, a founder of Leading Women, the network to support working women um, with networks, uh, workshops, a uh, really membership-led organisation. We're here to help you develop yourself and your business. Um, and today's actually theme is all about going for growth. So we're looking at how can we develop ourselves personally and how can we grow our business. So these are the questions we need you to send through to us. We've already had some through. Um, Kathy? Use the hashtag Leading Women Live. So um, if you want to give us a, a tweet, um, then send your questions into us there. You can also tweet us at Leading Women UK or our Facebook page as well, which is Leading Women UK. So um, we've been getting some through already. Um, and also, last um, month we had so many that we've still got some more to answer. So um, we will have answered all of your questions by the end of the show. So we've got one that has come through for Claire. Um, this has come through on Twitter um, from Kathy, which is at FCL underscore logistics. Um, Kathy said, we're based in Surrey um, and have a valued member of the team who is thinking of moving to Cornwall. What are the benefits of setting an office up in Cornwall, a sister office? I think there's many uh, benefits in terms of Cornwall as being a great place to live and work. Um, with super fast broadband, Cornwall is leading the way in terms of IT technologies. Um, having worked in the human investment team investing in Cornwall for the last 10 months, um, we have supported many small businesses or satellite businesses set up in Cornwall. And certainly with the innovation centres, um, they're a great place for those satellite businesses to set up. And with the collaboration and partners that can support them, um, bus uh, business collaboration in Cornwall, I think is key to supporting these businesses grow. Absolutely. We've got, we're actually leading women are, are based in the um, um, innovation centre here in Penryn. And it's been great for us as a small startup organisation to have that wealth of support around us. Um, so definitely, I think you've got the we've got the innovation centre here in Penryn. We've got another one in Paul and a new one in Truro. Yeah, so I think that is really key. Yeah. And I think the business networks, the the wealth of experience in Cornwall, um, and certainly kind of event management and IT expertise. Mm. Um, I think it would be really great. Um, that we can support um, this business looking to set up a satellite business yeah. in Cornwall. And I think also, I think Heather, you agree with me, there's a lot of investment in young people and making sure Absolutely. that we have the skilled workforce here, isn't there, in Cornwall? Yeah, I mean, we're really lucky in Cornwall because with the training and that that we've got and able to provide down here, and also we've got the European Social Funding, which is obviously really beneficial and is helping a lot of businesses and helping people to upskill in the area as well. I think it's also that work-life balance, um, I don't know if this is a, um, a female, I'm presuming it is, in, in they're looking for work-life balance and I think that's something you get in Cornwall, um, you know it's a great place to live, it's a great place to work um, and having your business here, um, for me, I've, I mean, I'm, I've got Fit and Fun Kids which is a childcare company, we've got leading women, um, I also own a vintage coffee shop, um, I'm involved in some other projects but it, it is a great place for me as a working mother to work um, and also have access to all the support that Cornwall offers. Yeah, definitely. I mean, super fast broadband is really leading the way. Mm. It's meaning that we can, you know, set up offices in small rural areas that otherwise we wouldn't really have kind of considered a hotspot for business. So do you think that's really helped push kind of the boundaries and mean that really, you know, anywhere can be your office? 
Mm. I think it has. I mean, certainly businesses in Cornwall, um, in terms of the Cornwall Business Awards now, you know, one of the categories is best use of super fast broadband. Mm. And the entries that are coming in for that in terms of very small businesses that are um, really kind of finding the benefits of using super fast broadband. Mm. And satellite mm. offices is, is a key one yeah. with the cloud computing, etc. Yeah. Yeah. That remote working is, is really making a difference, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. We at Full at Stock, we've, we have four offices now. We have um, offices in Truro and Exeter and Bristol and London. And super fast broadband has been key for us to be able to expand and be able to communicate between the offices and also with our uh, contacts and clients all over the world. So uh, having um, had a, um, our origin in Cornwall has been a massive help to us. Yeah, no, certainly. I mean, in terms of investing in Cornwall as well, I mean, the businesses we've helped relocate, you know, we can actually help with finding suitable property, um, you know, working close with the innovation centres, mm -hmm. um, and also kind of setting up a network and potential funding opportunities mm -hmm. um, that are available in Cornwall for businesses um, looking to grow. Yeah. So I think it's a great place to come and work. Good. Actually, one of our members um, runs a company called uh, Live Beside the Sea. Um, That's Jane. Jane Choke. Yeah, so, you know, again, it's, there's a lot of small to medium enterprises in Cornwall, which are also going to help anyone that's coming and bringing industry to us. Yes. And great to create small jobs as well. No, definitely. Yeah. And obviously, Anna, I work for Unlocking Potential. So, obviously, Unlocking Cornish Potential is all about bringing the talent to Cornwall and making sure that Cornish businesses have their kind of fair share of unlocking the talent that you know that can help to yeah, grow their business. It's all about keeping graduates down here or attracting graduates to Cornwall as well um, and we have a wealth of incredibly brilliant people who live here and realise actually you don't have to go and live in a city, you don't have to do the rat race um, because you can get quality of life and you can also have a really really good job at the same time and um, attracting new businesses here as well. Um, really helps with that. So definitely, yeah. and that's obviously a great way for businesses to, to grow because obviously they get the support of UCP. Have they, you know, been a little bit reluctant to take on a member of staff before UCP can obviously come in and? There's a huge amount of support in terms of the mentoring, in terms of the funding, in terms of the um, the, the support we would give the business owners yeah. as well as the graduates. Which, if for most businesses, I believe, outside of the county, you would have to invest that support yourself mm. in that graduate. So it's key to business growth yeah, down in Cornwall. Yeah, absolutely. It's brilliant. Fantastic. Okay. Should we look at the next question? Yeah. We have so many questions, so we will try and answer them all. Um, I've got a question which has come through on Twitter, which is from Tracy Rickard, um, who contributed a lot to our last show. Yeah, Thanks, yeah, Tracy. Yeah. Um, Tracy's come through at Tracy Rickard on Twitter. Um, so Tracy said, in terms of... Um, business growth, in terms of maximising business growth, um, in climates such as this, with you know the recession that's going on, where do you think um, businesses should invest their budgets to maximise business growth? Would you like to answer that one? I think it totally depends yeah. on what business you're in yeah. Yeah, um, and, and where, where you see the future trends being important to you and where your barriers are right now. Um, if you know where you want to be and what, what success looks like for you in a few years' time, yeah. in five years' time, in ten years' time, and you know what's stopping you from getting there right now, then that's where you should invest your money. Mm. Um, yes, we're in a recession, and yes, there's lots of businesses that are struggling from that, but most of the business I speak to on a day-to-day -day basis are doing really well, yeah. and yeah. they have massively positive things to say mm. because they're investing in their business in the right place, which is right for them mm. at that point, not necessarily generically for everyone. So I think without knowing more about yeah. them, it's really yeah. difficult I to say you should invest yeah. in Yeah, I think it is area. all about also knowing your business, um, having your strategy, where do I want to go? Okay, times are tough, so how am I going to remain sustainable during tough times? Mm. Um, would it be beneficial for me to collaborate? You know, would it be a case that I've really got to watch that cash flow forecast? Mm. You know, cash is key. Um, you know, for me, business plans aren't about just getting investment from the bank or funding. It's actually a tool to follow. Um, so it is looking at how you can still deliver your business and do it affordably. Um, so I think that's really important. There was um, a thing on the radio, I think it was on Radio 4, which I, d I didn't listen to, but someone else quoted to me, and it said, um, the new growth is standing still. Um, so actually maybe investing in your business is about just, just making sure that you're continuing to, to do the day-to-day -day mm. stuff at the moment, depending yeah. on which market you're in. And I yeah. think if it is a bit slack at the moment, this is an ideal time to start and do some more training. Yes. 
you mm. know, or you can tr be upskilling your staff. Mm. Mm. You know, the good apprenticeship schemes are out there now. It might be time to look on to bring on an apprentice to do some of those other jobs for mm -hmm. you, which I think yeah. is really good. Yeah. And also partnership working. I think that is so key, that it, especially in Cornwall, where you've got lots of little businesses, and it's linking up not just with the small businesses, but as Rachel and myself mm -hmm. have done with um, the Young Mums or the Chief project, it's a public circuit sector and private sector working together mm. to actually to come up with some good projects and we've yeah. created um, Yeah, I mean Young, young Mums Will Achieve was, was a pilot three years ago um, supporting young mums, uh, teenage mums that have fallen pregnant at a young age, um, dropped out of education and between Cornwall Council, Cornwall College and Fit and Fun Kids we've put together a service that's been immensely successful and um, risen or reduced our needs. Absolutely. Uh, the uh, last year's outcomes for that project was 82% of those young mums are either engaged in education or gone into employment. So really good for the community as well. Yeah. I think the other, the other key thing in terms of business support that's available, um, businesses will have an idea of where they want to go to next. But I think the wealth of business support that's available mm. um, in Cornwall through obviously unlocking potential, but through kind of Grow Cornwall in terms of having a mentor to kind yeah. of help mm. you with your planning, business planning and also the business boost funding that's available um, that can support a lot of businesses if they have a specific project they want to um, they want to kind of trade nationally and indeed internationally you know there's export mm. call that can help support yeah. that as well so I think there is a wealth of support out there um, mm. and I think the whole collaboration and business support mm. is really thriving mm. in Cornwall and businesses can take a um, yeah, and I think don't be afraid to ask for help. That's so important. Um, you know, build a relationship with your accountant, your your bank manager, the, your training provider. Um, network and find out who within your community is going to help you. Um, you know, if you have a challenge, don't bury your head in the sand. You know, I'm sure you, you know you've got people that come to follow it stop. Yeah. When it's a little bit too late, actually, yes. you know, <laughs> go and ask for help now. <laughs> yes, that that is absolutely key. If you are beginning to, to sense that something's not going as well as you as you think it might, get advice and help um, as soon as you can. And there's lots of it of, around, and there are lots of professional services providers around yeah. who can help you, you know, make sure that your, your um, paperwork and all your contractual stuff is, is okay and supports you. It's, it, you know, you might have to invest some money in it, but it'll save you a fortune further yeah. down the line. And, um, and there's loads and loads of support and, um, uh, people that you can rely on that aren't going to charge you, you know, that do a great deal. Um, so, yeah. yeah, the networking is key, though, say networking, because yeah. if, you, if you get out there and people find out who you are and mm -hmm. they know, then you can ask for help, you know, you can go to um, the Falmouth Business Club and there'll be somebody there who will have been in your situation beforehand and, and they'll be able to help you over a cup of coffee and say, yeah. oh, talk to this guy, talk to that yeah. guy. You know, you know, it's there. Yeah. There's lots and I always said, you know, people networking, um, it, it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be right for you now. Um, it could be building relationships that's going to help you in the future. It's knowing who, who is there to help you. Having that peer-to-peer -peer support, you can bet that whatever challenge you're going through, so who's the person next door? Mm. Um, and we've all got different ways of overcoming challenges. And actually, you know, they say a problem shared is a problem halved. So actually talking about it, finding out, getting advice on how I can improve, you know, my situation, my personal development, my business. Um, and also, you know, you can meet someone today that in a few months' time, when that challenge comes up, you think, I know just the person to speak to and feel comfortable yeah. to go and talk to them. I think another thing that's come out of the innovation centres as well um, is that whole collaboration where you've got very small startup businesses, um, and you must have seen this yes, as well, yeah. Rachel, in terms of... And that collaboration, you know, there just might be a small problem and you just talk to someone and they've kind of had a similar issue. And yeah. I think sometimes talking about it can really help. I think that's where yeah. the innovation centres are yeah. being really, yeah. really key to support businesses. Yeah. People we've do people. That. Sorry. It's just to say we've seen that in the in the workshops that I run or the learning groups that I run, just the the wealth of knowledge and experience which is in a room, just a, a few people is amazing and um, how they can leave just feeling like actually huge weight off the yeah. shoulders straight yeah. away just yeah. through having a chat with people. Yeah. Yeah. I felt that last night, we were just saying earlier, yeah. um, mm -hmm. I um, met up, well we had my, my leading women meeting yeah. last night in Friday and I just left feeling like, you know, I could have just paid hundreds of pounds to yeah. have a mentoring session because I just felt like I'd left with so many fresh 
perspectives and ideas for my yeah. business and I hope you know the other members felt the same yes. um, yeah. and I think sometimes when you you come together and you you know discuss your issues and not even issues but sometimes you don't realize that you're um you're putting your efforts into one way when you could mm. possibly be using them better in another way yeah. um, and I think that comes down to um also you know what Tracy says and what she asks about where we should best invest our our actual budget um I think it's important not to get um you know stuck in a rut because I think we can we, we see our kind of annual um, you know calendar for our business our marketing schedule and we think you know I'm doing that trade show in that month mm -hmm. I've got to you know order more business cards in this month and it can become a bit of a pattern and I think um, you know if, if business growth is an issue for you maybe that's time to kind of reevaluate where mm -hmm. you're putting your money I and mean, also your time as well I mean there's so much marketing now that's available free with social media and you know um, there's so many like you say with collaboration there's so many other ways around um, so if you know if yeah. cash flow is a problem yeah. and growth is is where you you know obviously where we all need to go yeah. but if yeah. growth is a particular um, concern for you then obviously try something new and you don't have to put your money in your in no. your pocket too much no. to try yeah. new things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you know marketing obviously is important you know to, to keep on with your marketing strategy throughout the year. Um, you know, like I said, social media is an affordable way but also like I said in the last program that actually you know Cornwall and Devil Media have a, an, a fantastic team behind the scene. They don't just place an advert, they have graphic designers, they have their editorials that will help you get the right message out to your audience and they'll do it within your budget. You know, so mm. it is again asking, yeah. this is what I can do, who can help me and yeah. find out what everyone can do to support you. I think that the, the communication and the networking is key because if you mm. are wanting to, you know, work on your marketing and that sort of thing, you might not know where to start, but if you come to a networking meeting like Leading Women, um, you know, there will be somebody there who can point you in the right direction, who has the right you know, contacts, um, and will be happy to share that information with you. Yeah. So, um, and that could make all the difference. Yeah. A network it is an affordable source and, and yeah. I would say don't go to just a network, there's, there's plenty of networks within each area of Cornwall to go to, you'll meet different groups of people, it's probably the most affordable way to grow your business because the advice that is shared at each network and particularly like leading women will have a speaker and everyone yeah. and everyone's there writing on the notes, you know, they will come back and yeah. go home with something really valuable. Just to have time, we're actually, um, for, oh, after the ad break, we're going to be interviewing um, Claire Thayers and Nikki Johns um, about their experience on personal development and growing their business. Um, so after we come back from that ad break, we'll have a chat with them. Um, and then we will go back to the questions later on in the programme. Um, so, so keep tweeting, hashtag Leading Women Live, and we will hopefully be able to answer your problems and questions. I'm Cassie from Leading Women UK. Now what can I tell you about Leading Women UK? Well, it's a business network for working women, women just like you. So whether you're starting your own business, you're an entrepreneur, or you just want to further your career and you need some new skills, Leading Women UK has everything you need to make your business grow. With 19 networks, anywhere from Listgard to Land's End and everywhere in between, you can meet like-minded women, you can discuss your business issues and problems, and listen to amazing guest speakers. We also offer around three workshops a month with industry experts, so you can learn anything you want from HR to PR, social media to sales. And Actually, we really value our members' opinions, so if you want to learn something, we will create a workshop just for you. And we also have some fantastic events. We have an annual conference, a charity ball, and also you can get involved with Leading Women Live on the Cornwall Channel. So there's so many opportunities. And we can also have loads of special exclusive offers and discounts for our members and lots of resources online too. So you're probably wondering, how much does all this cost to be a member? Well, actually, it's just one of these, £10 a month, and you get exclusive access to a whole range of resources and access to an amazing network of hundreds of women. So if you're looking to do something amazing for your business today, Day and you want to start seeing what becoming a leading woman is all about, pop along to a meeting, your first one's free, and we'd love to welcome you and see what we can do for you. So visit us at www.leadingwomenuk.com, follow us on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash leadingwomenuk, and also you can find us on Twitter at leadingwomenuk. I'm the mum of two boys and I was looking for childcare. Um, I came across Fit and Fun Kids and it was the best that I'd seen locally. We've been working at Cornwall College with Fit and Fun Kids now for three years on a Young, uh, young Mums Will Achieve project which has just had amazing outcomes for both our young mums and for our young children. 
um, Fit and Fun uh, supply the crush facilities for the projects in eight locations across the county. Their crèche workers are just incredible. They work really well with the children, but not just with the children, with the young mums. And they're supporting the young mums, helping the young mums get them into a routine, looking at their feeding, healthy living, looking at their development, and really strong links that have brought together that Fit and Fun are just an amazing company to be working with. I was just so impressed with the high quality staff and the engagement that the staff have with the children that I just thought this is definitely a career change for myself. Um, so I undertook my first qualification with Fit and Fun Kids and seven years later, here I am, I'm now their early years professional. Fit and Fun Kids have really, really high quality staff. Um, they're all highly trained and there is just such a warmth in the environment and the, the, ch the staff really, really care about each and every child's development. Welcome back to the second part of Leading Women Live. Please don't forget to keep tweeting us your questions at hashtag Leading Women Live. Um, please also bear in mind we are um, coming to you live so you might hear um, the odd lorry go past or a phone go off for people. We're, we're live at the Tremor Innovation Centre here in Penryn so apologise for any noise. Um, I'm delighted to be joined now by Claire and Nikki some amazing female entrepreneurs um, and I thought it would be, be really interesting to ask uh, their experiences and how they developed themselves personally and how they grew their business. So first of all, would you like to introduce yourself, Claire? I'm Claire Thayers and I've just set up my business, Claire Thayers & Associates, and I'm actually specialising in social responsibility. Hi, I'm Nikki John and I run my own business called Right Hand Woman and I organise events, weddings and also offer a personal concierge service. So Nikki, can you just sort of tell us a little bit more about your growth personally throughout your career, you know, where did your training start, okay. why did you feel there was a need to develop your per yourself personally, um, tell us your journey. Okay, um, probably the easiest way, I, I hopped from being in the Formula One industry and I used to organise all the international travel logistics for Formula One racing team, but then when I had my two girls, obviously there's not many racing teams down here in Cornwall. Um, so I had to create work around the academic timetable. And the best way, the best thing I thought I was good at was organising. And I have a passion for it. So that's a really good clue in running your own business is having a passion for organising. Um, and I set up my business Right Hand Woman. And at the time, Business Link were offering startup programmes. So I, uh, I joined them and that was really thorough, fantastic. And one of the statistics I learnt actually on that programme was 90% of businesses here in Cornwall are micro businesses, that's five people or less employed within that business. It's probably changed since that four years ago fact but it, that's it, extraordinary in itself. Mm. Um, and so not long after starting up my own business I learnt of the Empowering Smart Women programme. And when you work on your own, there's no way of having on-the-job training. You have to create it for yourself. I'm, I'm sure you've done yes, the same. Exactly the same. Um, and so the Empowering Smart Women programme was fully funded, extraordinary, um, and that taught us all about what sort of person we are, what sort of manager we are, where we could get our training. The networking involved with that was also extraordinary, mm -hmm. and you came out with a quali qualification at the end of it. And um, they did have awards at the end of the two-year programme, and I was happy to be awarded the Champion Award, which I was very proud of and very surprised at, actually. Um, and that just goes to show that if you put yourself out there and enjoy some training to, to develop yourself as a person mm. to help grow your business, then you will actually achieve great things as mm. well. well. How about you? Yeah, so I was yeah. on the same programme, yeah. life-changing. Yeah. So yeah. thank you, Enterprising Women. Mm -hmm. um, and I did the Institute of Leadership and Management course, mm -hmm. which is hilarious because actually I have no academic background at all. So I feel very honoured actually <laughs> to be included in the panel. Um, so I have sort of kicked the trend. Um, and so at the grand age of 45 or whatever I was, I actually did the Institute of Leadership and Management course. Um, and not only just the academic process of going through that was um, beneficial, but going back to this wonderful network mm. of wonderful mm. women and I got so inspired with mm. their life stories yes. and the life oh, journey yeah. that they've been on yeah. mm. and I know I'm a big advocate of it but actually 
going back to what you were saying in the mm -hmm. first part of the programme today, networking is fantastic yeah. because you learn so much from other people. Yeah. Um, and I certainly... For free. For free, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> and it's also, you know, as you say, we go through all these challenges in life and we feel very isolated and we think we're the only person going through that. Mm -hmm. And as a working mother, mm -hmm. we've got our own set of challenges on top mm -hmm. of that. So yeah. Yeah. those lovely networks where you surround yourself with like-minded people and yeah. you can be honest and open and bounce those ideas. Yeah. And, and we have got that culture in yeah. Cornwall. We're so lucky. Yeah. So and I lucky. mentored on the Impact Spot Women programme and actually it was, it was that's where really the leading women ethos came from because yeah. um, I could see through the training that I had done and I will say, you know, I, I did my personal training quite late in life as well. It's once actually mm. I got into business and realised actually I need to do a little bit more here. Um, but mentoring, I found actually it wasn't just the academic you know, qualification yes. came out, it was what you, you drew from the people that was on the same course as you, from all different industries. Yeah. Um, and it was really interesting and, you know, on what their learning was, um, what their strategy was, what their challenges were yeah. and how they overcame them. And I think that's a relationship that I know people have kept for quite a long time. Yeah. So um, was that the same for you? Did oh, you feel that value? Completely, and, and I still keep in touch with the people that I was on the yes, courses, yeah. and I've also done Common Purpose as well, mm -hmm. which was fascinating and interesting. And suddenly you build up, and I hate the word networking because it almost mm. devalues it. Mm. It's about people and people yes. by people, yes. and if you all support each other, it's beneficial for everybody. And as you say, you never stop learning, yeah. ever stop learning, yeah. and doing the mentoring and giving something out there and giving something back. Yeah. Um, I've just put my name down to do some mentoring with UCP, which I'm looking forward to, and I'm working with um, School of Social Entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. and I learn as much from the students and the people that I'm working mm -hmm. with yeah. um, than any textbook. Yeah. You know, it's all very nice reading it in the textbooks, yeah. but actually you learn so much more from yeah. other and people think, and their journeys. Yeah, and I think the young people actually teach you. Oh, yourself. massively. You think, wow, how can they be so savvy yes. at this age in life already? And Amazing. here we are with all these programs around to help them. Yeah, and fantastic. And Themselves and, and get a plan into process and and be given a target with your because this is what uh, one of the things that leading women will be helping with yeah. and you actually say what are your passions what are your drivers in life mm. how are you going to get there and by the end of this program these young wonderful inspiring women already mm. know where they want to go mm. how they're going to get there and what the process is to get there yeah. and. Mm. And I think it's a common thing, a common theme with women is that we do put that glass ceiling. Mm -hmm. All of us yeah. sort of doubt ourselves, are we good enough? We can get found out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we all feel it, but we never sort of share it. And Leading Women gives us that nice, open, honest mm -hmm. environment where we can share those stories yeah. and be honest and open yeah. without anybody judging us. No. Mm -hmm. And I think personal development, it, it, is, um, it is lifelong learning. Oh. And actually, the personal development isn't just about the qualification, it's also about attending mm -hmm. workshops for upskilling. Yes. Um, sharing knowledge which is really valuable, hearing inspiring people. Mm -hmm. But going back to the academics, I'm sure Heather will tell us more about it later, mm -hmm. you know, it's the understanding that you, know, you can undertake an apprentice, there's about 250 apprenticeships out yes. there, and you can undertake that between 16 and 65. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know, there's no excuse for us not to upskill ourselves at all. Exactly. Either. So what mm -hmm. made you both come to the decision, you know, I really need to look at my stuff? Because it is so hard when you're running a business and you're head down and you're mm -hmm. developing all those around us, to actually take time out for ourselves. Yeah, well, I, I, I identified where some of my weak areas were and then started looking around for the courses that might be available. And then once I, because I wanted to develop my marketing and um, I didn't really have any clue about marketing or and the strategy. So I eventually found one through Cornwall College, sorry, True and Penwith College, and they have a business success courses there. And so I'm doing a marketing PR foundation degree level. So it's like a module in foundation degree level five. And, um, and then again, the, you're instructed by people who are in their game already. Mm. They're the successful marketeers. There's an amazing P um, PR lady there who's been all over the world doing this stuff. And here she is in Cornwall, mm -hmm. inspiring us, teaching us the strategies. And we have to do assignments, which are quite hard because I'm a single mum with two young children. So that's a challenge, but you just have to do it. You mm. find the time, the pockets mm. of time, don't you? That was going to be my question, actually. I mean, it is hard, yeah. you know, as working mums mm. and full-time working women, you mm. know, it, we juggle all the balls. How do you find the time to study? Because all the mm. qualifications, you do have to do your assignments, you have deadlines to meet, as you do in business. 
How do you find the time? How do you manage your day? It's really interesting. I'm just know. a bit of a dinosaur. I'm, st- <laughs> I'm still got a, a, a good old fashioned pile of facts. I'm sorry, <laughs> hands up. I know everybody else has got iPhones, but I'm old. Um, and it is just being that disciplined. It's just getting every single mo- Monday morning, you're sitting down with a cup of coffee. Mm-hmm. Once the kids have gone to school and you've got the house back to yourself, yeah. and plan the week. Planning, like, you know, just do it and make sure that you block that time out, mm-hmm. be it on your iPhone mm-hmm. or your file of facts, but mm-hmm. block those pockets of time out and be disciplined and allow some me time because yeah. that's a very very important it is a work life yeah, balance recharge, absolutely yeah. mm-hmm. and the more that we can do that and give ourselves the permission to take yeah. some time out mm-hmm. that's great and sometimes you do need to go for a walk and just mm-hmm. get your head straight and some of your best thinking time yeah. is when you're out on your own mm-hmm. and you've got some me time yeah. so you know it's not it's not too indulgent mm-hmm. to actually I'll be Take honest, a break. You know, is it is it a challenge? Have you got to stay just like you know, and you've got to get that last assignment in, and you're you're burning them in at all, and you just think, why am I doing this? You know, if you've yeah, got you to do go cases, through that yeah. definitely. Yeah. You know, I always well, beat myself up halfway through a course, but actually by the end of it, you've learnt so much, yeah. and you come away with the qualification, and you can feel proud of yourself because mm-hmm. no one else is going to tell you you've won't done well. Mm. So it's really important to actually celebrate what you've achieved, I think, and say well done. You know, well done, Nikki. Yeah. You actually pulled. Put your finger out yeah. and did something today for yourself. Yeah. So. And do you feel that the, the training or the personal development route you saw has it, improved your confidence and your self esteem? Yeah, mm-hmm. do you know that's exactly mm-hmm. the words yeah. I was going to say, Rachel. <laughs> so I've got two girls, and I've said to them that the academia is really, yeah. really important, mm-hmm. but self-confidence and self-belief is absolutely key yeah. and so my girls dear of them whether they get that self-confidence through other things over and above the academia that's great I, you know they I encourage them to do well in sports but confidence is the key mm. to everything mm. and certainly through doing my institute of leadership management course yeah. slog as it was um, mm. but I actually got such a buzz out of that yeah. and I got my confidence back and it's all about that confidence and if you give out good vibes and you feel confident believe you me it comes back to you you know bucket balls yeah. Um, yeah. and so hold your head up high be proud go out there we are as good as the men we can do mm. just as well as them and believe in yourself and if you believe in yourself you can mm. succeed I think that as being becoming a mum quite often you lose your own identity oh, God, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and you ca- you tend to have a lot of self you feel worthless sometimes because yeah. you're doing all the chores and no joy um, and obviously your kids you love your kids and they love you back but it's the mundane stuff and so empowering yourself by learning new mm. things mm learning new skills you actually start believing that you're you again mm, yeah and you you find you find yourself all of a sudden and even if it's little pockets of time over a few years if you've tr- uh, gone back and retrained mm. and you've helped your business develop I've been very conscious of do, developing or growing my business very slowly mm. because my children are so young and I am beholden onto the academic timetable mm. so I'm very lucky to have found a job that I can work around the school timetables which is a challenge for every mother yeah. um, and also joining leading women oh my goodness that's changed my life <laughs> um, because of the networking involved and the workshops that are free once you remember and it's so affordable it's only 10 pounds a month and every single workshop has a most inspiring tutor if you like um, there was one yesterday by Trevor Lee of Trevor Lee Media in marketing Obviously, it's my new passion. <laughs> here. Um, but I, I, um, at the end of it, he had a round of applause. Yeah. And this is at the end of a workshop. And the women were so inspired mm. of what they were learning and the strategy he was giving them to develop their own business. Yeah. And all of them are yeah. micro businesses. Tools, isn't it? Yes, yeah. it's giving them that skill yeah. or giving them uh, up skills, yeah. if you like. Yeah. And would you say that your personal development was part of your business growth strategy or was it a defining moment that, you know, I need to look at myself, or did something happen that make you think, you know, I need to do yeah. leadership management training, or I, I need to do marketing training, mm-hmm. and what, how did it come about? It is interesting, actually, because on the Enterprising Women, I don't know if you went through the same sort of course as I went through, but on day one, it was very good because it was building us as a team in our cohort, but each of the women in our group, of which there was about 10, I think, we had a, a flip chart, and we had about an hour to put together our life's journey yeah, and actually that, present yeah. to the rest of the mm-hmm. girls, and what was fascinating was how we as women adapt as we go through life because life isn't straightforward you know we 
some of us have our marriages that come and go <laughs> and then we have our children and life keeps throwing challenges at us and one thing that I think women are very good at is adapting and changing and as your life adapts and changes it's knowing what sort of support that you need and that's education progressing your skills but certainly in our group there wasn't a dry eye in the house I mean we were just humbled by the stories that were told and we all had that kindred spirit that my goodness we've all had our challenges but we've all come out of that better for it and we've learnt and I think that's something to hold on to as well that yeah. whatever the challenges are in life turn every negative into a positive yeah look upon a problem as a challenge yes and uh, yes so it's and an opportunity yeah. it's an yeah. opportunity yeah. you know it's it's certainly right, yeah. you know we all have our, our challenges in life and if you can turn that into a positive mm. and turn it into an opportunity I know people that have gone through redundancies and um, I've gone through a sticky st- stage in my life but turn that round into a you know there's a great big wide world out there we can do what we want to do don't be afraid and take yeah. that leap and that that's where leading women yeah. can just give us that extra confidence mm, yeah, boost yeah, and just yeah. say you're not alone, we've yeah. all been there. Yeah. Um, the Parents Fund Women programme at Trim Penworth sadly mm-hmm. ended, uh, you know, the funding finished that ended a few years ago, but um, both Trim and Penworth and Cornwall College have some fantastic further education opportunities. Um, if you want to have the contacts to find out uh, what's available to you and also the personal de- uh, trainers yeah, that right. can help you and the networks and the workshops you can attend, if you email us at hello at leading women, uh, we'll get that that all that information emailed back to you. And um, do, yeah, do definitely take it up. That yeah. could be your challenge for the rest of the year to go on some sort of course before the end of the year yeah. and just yeah. find your, just empower yourself, I think is really yeah. important. Yeah, be inspired. Yeah. There's an amazing speaker. If any of you have a look on TED, um, there's a, a, a talk by a guy called Ernesto Soroli, mm-hmm. um, which is about empowering people to set up their own businesses and stand on their own two feet. And one of the biggest challenges that Ernesto has said and identified is that the death of most entrepreneurs working on their own. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is why leading women is yeah. absolutely yeah. vital for us all because you do feel very isolated, and especially in a rural area, area like mm-hmm. Cornwall, yeah. you have to take yourself out of yeah. the comfort zone. Yeah. You have to push yeah. yourself that little bit extra. Go on the courses, yeah. do the networking, yeah. offer your t- time and services as well into the community do some mentoring go and help other people Mm. because again it all helps it just gets you out there and the more you're out there the more your confidence grows yeah and yeah I joined the leading women for that very reason because I'm on my own the entire time yes and so um, and I'm a people person so it really was literally killing me and then you actually find all these amazing women out there who are feeling slightly similar but together you empower yourselves you feel absolutely fantastic um, you learn so much about your business and what have you. Yeah. Um, so we've got a Twitter coming in. Oh, a tweet. We've got a tweet coming in. I'll probably back Sit on it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Claire, I know you're an advocate for corporate social responsibility, yeah. and I know myself as a business owner, I love giving oh, back. So do I. And, and actually, you know, as much as giving back, I gain so much yes, as well. So, so much. Yeah. I can't stress enough the benefit, and going back to your the, the start of the programme today, when you're talking about how can you do things but with a limited budget, actually go out there and get involved because it's about as you say you get so much from it as an individual but actually you know it doesn't hurt to be seen to be out there Mm -hmm. and PR and social media Mm -hmm. we want the feel-good stories we want to say to people that we're nice individuals Mm -hmm. and good businesses doing good things Mm -hmm. equates Mm -hmm. to hopefully some good profit so it's very very simple and hopefully you all saw um, Alex Polizzi this week Um, she was working with a few set of funeral directors who got a very dated image and they got into a rut and they couldn't sort of pull themselves Mm -hmm. out but interestingly small family business a lot of things that they were doing was getting engaged with the local community they all got gathered together they had white balloons and they let balloons Mm. off um, on behalf of their loved ones but it brought the community together and the whole perception of that brand has shifted dramatically Mm. through the work that they were doing in the community and the PR on the social media it's just the way forward Mm. and you know the world's a different place you know we Mm. we've seen from horse meat and burgers Mm. and not paying tax and Starbucks you know it's a small world Mm. and actually by doing good things it does have its yeah. payback. Yeah. It makes you feel great as well. Oh, it's, yeah. there's nothing yeah. like it. It's fantastic. Yeah. And I think also in Cornwall, there's a one big thing. If you if you are a small business and you haven't got the funds to go and outsource something, then do a favour swap. Yes. Oh, you know, I I've done that. that so many times. Yeah. And you feel great, they feel great. No money swap, but actually you've helped each yeah. other mm. grow in that area that mm. you need to grow. And, yeah. and just that's with the networking yeah. again. You know, you find the people that you can help. It's fantastic. Great. Okay, I think we're ready to go for another break. But just quickly, going back to one of the earlier questions, um, you know, 
it is a tough time at the moment. Have you, would you say that going back to training has really helped you through the tough times? Well, without a yeah, doubt. Definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It yeah. just gives you that time to step yeah. out of that busy lifestyle yes. and reflect. And yes, it's about the academic, but it's not just about yeah. doing the academic process. Yeah. It's about surrounding yourself with like-minded people. And form a strategy people. as well. Yes. It helps you form a strategy of the next step, how you're going to take your business. It's mm. really important to take time out yeah. to do that yeah. and plan ahead. Yeah. Do you yeah. know, I could keep talking to you for ages. <laughs> <laughs> it's been so good. Cool. Like, but anyway, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and I'm sure we'll have you on one of our shows again. Thank so you. Thanks, thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm the mum of two boys and I was looking for childcare. Um, I came across Fit and Fun Kids and it was the best that I'd seen locally. We've been working at Cornwall College with Fit and Fun Kids now for three years on a Young, uh, young Mums Will Achieve project which has just had amazing outcomes for both our young mums and for our young children. Um, Fit and Fun uh, supply the creche facilities for the projects in eight locations across the county. Their creche workers are just incredible. They work really well with the children, but not just with the children, with the young mums. And they're supporting the young mums, helping the young mums get them into a routine, looking at their feeding, healthy living, looking at their development, and really strong links that have brought together that Fit and Fun are just an amazing company to be working with. I was just so impressed with the high quality staff and the engagement that the staff have with the children that I just thought this is definitely a career change for myself. Um, so I undertook my first qualification with Fit and Fun Kids and seven years later, here I am, I'm now their early years professional. Fit and Fun Kids have really, really high quality staff. Um, they're all highly trained and there is just such a warmth in the environment and the, the, ch the staff really, really care about each and every child's development. Welcome back to Leading Women Live. Um, I hope you enjoyed that interview with uh, Claire and Nikki. Um, so while they've been chatting away, um, we've got loads of tweets and questions coming through on the hashtag Leading Women Live. So um, I'll start with this one from Sally. Sally's from Absolute Joinery, um, at Absolute Joinery on Twitter. And she asks, hi, question for the panel. How do you discipline yourselves for time management? Which obviously comes into obviously growing your business um, because obviously we've got to make sure that um, we're, we're valuable, there's only one of us, we've got to make sure that yeah. we're doing the right things yeah. and putting ourselves into the right situations. I think, you probably agree, I think we're all really good at organising our time. Mm. I think because we have so much responsibility, not just at work, but you know, in our home life, that we have to manage our time well. And I think, you know, we all have different ways. We heard from Claire earlier that has, you know, her file of facts. Yeah. I, on my iPhone, it's one of those questions, you know, if you're in a burning building, <laughs> what would you say? Yeah. It would be my phone. <laughs> I need that. I need to schedule my time because I think that's when the stress kicks in. If I haven't it's like the fear of not knowing yeah, yeah. where you're meant to be, yeah, what you've yeah, got to do, yeah. deadlines, I'd hate, I think customers. I'd hate to let someone down. Yeah. Um, I'd hate to not do my job well. Um, I'd hate to miss an opportunity. Mm. So for me, it's, you know, I have my long-term strategy. All my team at Fit and Funkers know where they are and where they're going to be in two years' time. So, you know, you have your long-term strategy and then you've got, you know, your medium and your short-term. Um, and my short-term is, is day by day, yeah. hour by hour. Anyone else? Absolutely, yeah, I agree with that. It is saying that, right, two hours, I've got to do that job, within, I must do it within that two hours, and then I'm going to give myself an hour to do something for mm. me. Because I think Claire mentioned earlier, it's really important that you're looking after yourself as mm. well. And it's time management for yourself as well as for your business. And I think that everybody's got little kind of strategies and tips and things that work for them. Like I personally, if I see my phone, and I'm, I'm like you, Rachel, mm. a slave to the <laughs> iPhone, um, other phone makes are available. <laughs> but, um, if I'm on my <laughs> if I'm on my generic um, smartphone, um, if I see the um, obviously the message um, icon and I see all of the emails coming through, I would rather sit there, go through them all, and then flag the ones that I need to reply yeah, to yeah, yeah. because I am. Um, yeah, as a marketeer, I will sign up to other people's email lists, yeah. and I'm a member of so many email lists. And I probably should unsubscribe because it will make my workload a lot easier. But I would, I do get a lot of daily mm. kind of marketing tips and daily kind of newsletters and things. Mm. So it is a bit of a sifting mm. job. So for me to manage my time, I'd rather sift and flag, mm. and then when I go back to the office, I know exactly how many flagged emails I've got, which are priorities. Yeah. So that works for me. And obviously, I I am really really addicted to my paper diary as well. Mm. If I don't see that within 
kind of like a meter of me I start freaking out so mm. everyone's got their own little kind of management and things but yeah. it's about learning what works for you yeah. and if things aren't working you know like we said with with growing your business earlier then try something new yeah. because there's so many apps yeah. so many kind of processes yeah. you can use and yeah. obviously everyone's got different, a wealth of you know knowledge and different things that work for them and that's what obviously leading women is about yeah. it's about sharing tips yeah. So I never used to use post-it notes, but since working in the office with you, I literally I I've gone. I have <laughs> yeah. they've taken yeah. over, yeah. Yeah. and I think I've run out of about two packs. So it's quite interesting. On the social media training we've been given lately, a lot of people have said, "How much time do I devote to social media? You know, how many messages should I be putting out there?" Well, what I've actually got a question about that, so I'll ask you that. <laughs> very, very um, topical. Yeah, I've got a question which came through on Twitter, um, and it says. Um, what small steps can I make to help grow my business through social media if I don't have much time? So I always think that they're kind of connected in a question. People always feel, feel that social media is the thing they'll do if they have the time. Mm. But I think if you want to make a go of it, you've got to integrate it into your life. I see this as an extension of my limb, so mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't find, you know, I, I, if I see something, I just think Instagram. Yeah. And I mean, actually, I was Instagramming the view when my fiancé proposed to me because... <laughs> I'm tr it's true social media yeah. addict. Um, so, but I mean, I wouldn't, you know, recommend you go that far. But you know, <laughs> but you know, it, it's it's part of you, and your social media is part of you, and your business is an extension of that. So, sitting down and having an hour where you tweet is probably not going to be beneficial. Yeah. You need to integrate it into your life. And I think people need to have the understanding on how to use social media well. Yeah. I think because so much new technology is coming out at the moment that everyone thinks I must be doing it. But actually, again, you need to form a strategy. Yeah. You know, is and you've got to work, to work out what you. Why yeah. are you on social media? Yeah. Is it for um, personal? Yeah. Like both of us, we've got the social okay. media accounts which kind of cover all of our multiple businesses. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, you, are, are you tweeting as a you know a place of work with a logo? Are you tweeting as yourself as an entrepreneur? Yeah. Or are how, you how many in the panel do you use social media as at all? Yes. You do. Yeah. 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 Do you, do you? Yeah. I oh, use it more for business purposes than per personal. Like mm, yeah. Your yeah. your Twitter is very much about you as a person because your business is, is intrinsically yeah. linked yeah. to you. Which is why I've changed my Twitter name to my to yeah. my name because you know it's 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 so identity based. Yeah. Everyone knows you as as your business, but for for people I think in bigger businesses and yeah. what I do, it's 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 quite removed. But yeah. I use Hootsuite a lot yes. as well. Yeah. Schedule. Um, and I'm I'm not on my phone constantly um, in in the same way either. So I I will schedule tweets. Um, yeah. You know, around. But this and that's a good way of on. managing time it and stress really as well because way. you know that it's taken care of. And we use Buffer as well, mm, don't we, for leading yeah. women? So um, because we've got so many, we've got 17 monthly networks at the moment. So um, to make sure all our members are kept up to date, obviously mm. we we rely on Hootsuite and Buffer to schedule the meeting update so all of our mm. members know where they are yeah. and yeah. you know where they can yeah. go across the yeah. county from Liscard to Lands End. Yeah. So, and I think um, if it's not your thing, social media, mm. get somebody that can help oh, you. Oh yeah, yes. or get them yes. to it's do If you're not like enjoying it, it then you know, yeah. Yeah. Yes. definitely concentrate on what you're really good on yeah. for your business, yeah. and then we get other people to help you with those. Yeah, definitely agree with yeah. that. Yeah. We have um, centrally coordinated tweeting. We tweet because we were very aware that you know, mm. as, a, as a firm mm. we need to, to manage. Mm. You can't have you know individuals yeah. within your organisation all tweeting away mm. yeah. and no sort of strategy to mm. it. So in order to, to be able to sort of control the messages that were coming out and link back to the website so that everybody's picking up the articles and relevant information, you know, don't want to be bombarding people with 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 you know irrelevant stuff, you know. Um, and so yeah, we 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 do it centrally. That's so a really it's good not point, actually, actually me. because I'm sure there are a lot of people out there that, like you that are part of you know we've got sister offices or mm. um, you know they're part of a, a kind of a franchise or part of a, a, a wider um, set of businesses. Um, so that that would kind of conjure up a few more questions about consistency. Obviously, yeah. the profile images would have to be consistent, um, and your Twitter names as well. So just a quick tip: if anybody out there is looking to either get onto Twitter or maybe change their Twitter name, there's a really really handy website called Namecheck.com that is spelled name c h k dot com, and basically you can type in what you would like to have as your Twitter name, um, and it will check every social network, literally about a hundred of them. There's you know social networks on there that I've never even heard of and um, I'm obsessed with it um, and it will come up and it will tell you whether they're available or not so it's great for not just if you're looking to be in line with other you know businesses within your you know within your company yeah. um, or within your kind of group of, of companies but actually if you want to just meet, be consistent with yourself yeah. um, to make sure that your Pinterest your Instagram mm. your Facebook your Twitter are all the same thing so I recently did yeah. that and did like a brand audit yeah. and made sure that I yeah. completely restructured everything yeah. so 
that's, yeah. that's and a, and those actually that want, want some help with their social media um leading women are offering free workshops for their members so you know get in touch uh, with us or look on our website www.leadingwomenuk.com all the workshops are on there so you know we can help you um to understand the wonders of social networking and actually another twitter came through oh, be tweet. quick be quick i would say because they are filling yeah. up especially <laughs> the pinterest and instagram one later yeah. this month so uh, get onto our website <laughs> really good tweet came in early and again you know i'm i feel quite confident now but i've never heard of this this is from sophie king um at crown and glory her company's crown and glory um, accessories um i think uh, social media queen Cass, you'll be able to answer <laughs> this one um what do you think of the new app vine and what do you think it means for the future of social networking no i've not even heard of this what's Vine? vine i love vine it's it's one of those things where you think why didn't anybody think of it before i would kind of describe it as almost like the love child of instagram and youtube um so it's kind of it's the same concept of instagram you kind of scroll down your feed for you, your box kind of image but instead of an image it's actually a um, a selection of a six up to six second video clip. All right. So you're almost sharing snippets of your life. And um, when I heard about it, it was like a video sharing. I thought, well, what's what's the difference? You know, we've got YouTube um, and we've got Instagram for pictures. Like, why do we need this? Mm. But actually, you'd be surprised at how much you can communicate within six seconds. Mm. And it doesn't have to be six mm. seconds. It can be less. Can I just um, jump in there quickly while it's on my mind? <laughs> we're, we're being filmed by the Cornwall Channel today. And what I found was great, the Cornwall Channel, is they will actually come and film you with your logo behind you, a 30 second pitch about your business or promotion, and actually having videoing on your website. That's exactly what I was just gonna say. Yeah, it's sorry, definitely the future. Yeah, no, 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 I it's agree, I agree, rankings, yeah. It? It's not just about Google rankings for me, it's like the same for networking, it's that face-to-face -face interaction, it's the emotive side of it. Definitely. You know, um, so if you I want think videos advertising, the yeah. Video's video. the future. Yeah. Um, and Cornwall Channel aren't paying us to say this. No, no, no. <laughs> I literally think it is. Yeah, we'll sort that one out later. <laughs> but um, no, literally, it really is. I mean, um, I was just going to say about the social media, actually, that um, about uh, you know the question that just came in about how to um, grow your business if you don't have much time on social media. I was going to say, actually, that adding a photo to a post on your Facebook page can actually increase engagement by up to around 400%. So... Um, people want to see what is going on in your business. They want to see your products. They want to see you. They want to see who you know who's behind the business. What you get up to behind the scenes. Um, a great way of using Instagram is um, Heat Magazine. Mm -hmm. They get sent so many freebies and weird and wonderful things by all the companies, <laughs> and they get to meet all sorts of random celebrities, mm -hmm. and they do crazy things. And you just go on their Instagram feed, and it's just completely behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And that's what people want to see. They want to see what goes on, you know, with you and your business. So. Um, in very much the same way, Vine is, you know, it's a kind of insight into your world. And I know Sophie, who um, sent the question in, uh, was one of the first people on my social um, media network to start using Vine. Um, and you can actually pause, um, you can kind of take different snapshots of different um, screens and use your thumb to hold, to stop and start. And then it comes like an edited video. So I know Sophie's done some cool kind of stop frame things around her office, doing a little tour around her office. And that works really well for her because people want to see like where do these beautiful accessories get made, yeah. like what happens, what does her office look like. Yeah. And I think that Vine is a great way to kind of show also how your products work. I mean, you've got an opportunity there to shoot, have a few seconds. Yeah. You know, if you if you manufacture something, show it. You know, show how your customers use it. Show someone actually with it. Um, mm, yeah. And I think it's just um, an extension of what has become so popular. Yeah. I mean, Pinterest and Instagram. The, they're just so, I mean, P Pinterest was the fastest growing social network ever. Um, and I think Vine is just going to follow in yeah. its footsteps. I think it's probably going to be a bit, little bit slower to kind of get off the ground. But yeah. I think people are going to warm up to the fact that video is the future. And, you know, it gives an insight that text and images just cannot provide. Mm -hmm. It is this whole um, change of the way that we are consuming information. Mm -hmm. Everyone has information overload on the internet, and it's it's how do we get it in? It's in almost the a laziness, possible. really. We want to be we want to be shown it. Yeah. We don't want to read. We yeah, don't even want to see a picture. We want to we want to watch a video. People scan everything online. You scan, you find something that gonna, that's going to interest you, and images attract people far mm. quicker um, than uh, and video. They say a picture paints a thousand words. Yeah, and so it does, and it does. And we, uh, human beings quite an old are visual. Cliche. <laughs> um, so we'd much prefer to see a picture than we would to see some mm. text. Definitely. Well, one of the other questions that came through was how can I use the internet to get more customers? And again, it's linking 
the social media links with your website, you know, the video promotion on your website. These are all sort of tools that we need, really. If you're not online, you just need to be online. If you're not online now, then, you know... Have you got any legal advice we need to be aware of, though, when we're using all the social media and using the internet, you know? You do need to be careful, um, obviously, not to publish anything defamatory. Mm -hmm. Don't comment on um, stuff that's currently sort of going before the courts. Mm -hmm. Stay away from controversy if you can do. And make sure that all your contractual stuff is up to date. Mm, yeah. Okay, so um, and if anybody has any queries about that, they can always send me an email and I'll see what I can yeah. do. There was yeah. that story about the onion. Uh, did you see that? Um, it's a popular website and um, kind of Twitter feed. Um, mm-hmm. And they were live tweeting um, from, I think it was the Oscars, mm-hmm. um, or one of the award ceremonies that's been happening. And they actually tweeted um, a swear word um, to insult the, I'm not sure of her name, she's a nine year old actress. From America, oh, no. and oh, they okay. used a very horrible swear word to, yeah. to you know, against a child, which created a huge media yeah. Yeah. kind of yeah. you know yeah. scandal. Yeah. And that's just you know just goes to show how one tweet, yeah. if you've got the right amount of audience, can yeah. actually yeah. you yeah. Know, do have to be very you do careful. have to be careful. Yeah. You know, think it's a bit like you know we always I would always say you know be careful after nine o'clock at night if you're sending emails as well, yeah. and not yeah. with a glass of wine in no, your hand. No. Just be just be very careful mm. what you're you're putting mm. out there, and make sure it's. You know, it's professional, it's true, and links back to your website, and it's creating the impression that you want to create. For and it's your, genuine your and business. sincere because obviously yes. your values and your business values should be yeah. the same. So it should should come from the right place. Yeah. You want to get noticed. You want to maybe be a bit edgy, um, but you know it can create a world of pain. So yeah. um, and know, I think Heather, easy. I know we've we've been working closely in the Cornwall College. Are really passionate about. Um, employability skills and encouraging employability skills with young people and that's one of the messages we've put out to them as well as as employers Absolutely. you know we will check the Facebook yeah, so yes. you've got to be yeah, careful really Absolutely. To care. what you're careful what aren't you've got on your Facebook site to make sure you've got all your privacy levels yeah. correct and up to date because yeah. we do have a lot of problems with younger people on their Facebook site yeah. and I think Twitter as well the more young people that get involved with Twitter um, Facebook, you can obviously lock down, but you know Twitter is mm. there for everyone to see, mm. and that's a really good way yeah. for potential employers looking at a person's yeah. Twitter. Yeah. And I know, think especially encourage young people about aware. keeping safe, keeping safe on these sites. As a business, we, we like you said, we've got to bear all this in mind. It's a great tool, but use it appropriately. Can I just do a round panel sort of um, request now for our top tips? You know, at this current time, what would you say? Maybe start with you, Anna. Okay. So you're knocking potential. You know, what are the top tips we can give our viewers today that's going to help them with a personal development growth and growing their business? Shameless plug. Plug away. Plug away. Personal development, especially for graduates, are um, if you're in the county, obviously, then then approach UCP about getting getting a job and having the support through the mentoring scheme. Um, that they run. Um, I'd give a that. big thumbs up yeah, to that as well. If <laughs> you are looking to set up your own business, then there's the graduate um, startup program. And if you are already in business as a director or a senior level management, then talk to me about the uh, learning groups that we, we run to help grow your business as well. There we go, Seamus. Thank you. <laughs> no, we need that. We need that information. I'd say, um, from a legal perspective, if you're looking to grow your business or you're starting out, um, there are lots of legal services providers who will help you um, and many of them will do it for free. We offer free contract health checks for your employment contracts for example. Also you know your, your, um, how you've set up, get some advice about it so that you know that the sole trader um, vehicle is good for you or you want to be a limited company or a partnership. If it's you and your husband, get that formalised because, <laughs> sorry guys, but if it does all go horribly wrong, some, some paperwork and a paper trail may help you. So, um, yes, review everything as you grow. Make sure that the provisions that you've got in place are appropriate for your business at that time so that you can grow without having to worry that something awful is going to raise its ugly head in the future, which could cost some money. Mm. Okay, um, I'd probably say um, I'm going to do another little bit of a shameless plug, <laughs> um, but I would say definitely, I know, you know that I'm, uh, I love social media, and I would definitely say if you're not using it, then you really need, really, really, really need to be. Even if you don't think you're going to use it much, my advice would be to claim all of the names that you think you want to use because chances are someone might take it. I mean, there's so many people that want to use a name and they can't because it's been claimed. But make sure that your domain name, your Twitter name, your Facebook name, everything can be the same because if one's different, then you know when you cross promote through different networks, there's going to, there could be problems. And also, people do want to be fed information easily. They don't want to have to search for you. 
Um, so I would say claim your names, make it easy for people to get hold of you. And here's where the shameless plug comes in. Mm -hmm. um, we have a Pinterest and Instagram workshop, which is at the end of this month in March. So um, log on to leadingwomenuk.com, click on the workshops at the top of the page, and then you'll be able to see all the information there. And it's free for all of our members. So we'd love to welcome you. Fantastic. Okay. Heather, um, I think one of the main things are, and if you can afford one, get yourself a business coach because that's really going to help you to structure yourself as well as your business, which is really good. The other things I would suggest is don't forget there are lots of young people out there who need work mm -hmm. experience. The new 16 to 19 work and study program is about getting young people those employability skills and that work experience. So there's lots of young people out there who are happy to do work experience. So if you need some free labour, good one that goes <laughs> well. And don't forget apprenticeships. Absolutely. Lots of apprenticeships out there, like Rachel said any earlier, any age at all, going up to level four and level five. Okay. So really good. I'm really sorry, Claire, we've run out of time. We'll have had to have you back again. Okay. Um actually we've got quick a uh, quick Quick second, go on. Okay. Um, yeah, apprenticeships, apprenticeship agency can um, recruit apprenticeships to take the recruitment issues away from businesses, business collaboration, um, and leading women network, a great way to just collaborate. Okay, and just quickly, if we missed anything today, contact us. If we can't help you, we certainly know someone who can. So please get in touch with us. And come along to a meeting if you want to kind of join yeah. our team yeah. and There's see what it's all about. First one. Yeah, just come and see if it's for you. But thanks for joining us. Um, any other questions, make sure you come to the trust and we'll see if we can help. Thank you. And thanks for the panel. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>